DLSS and upscalers like it deliver better looking visuals seemingly for free. So it's no wonder that I occasionally hear people asking, why don't we add DLSS to YouTube? Bad news is, it isn't possible. Good news is, it has its own similar tech already. Bad news is, we're already benefiting from that, so don't expect to see major improvements anytime soon. You see, there are different limiting factors in games and in videos. In games, it's about getting as many pixels worth of detail for as little computing power as possible. Whereas with video, it's more about how big a video file you can tolerate it being, with the bigger the video file being better in quality, but obviously being slower to stream and more expensive for the companies hosting that video, which is why they do everything in their power to drop the quality as much as possible. So you bet they're already upscaling their content as far as they can, although it's not really upscaling. YouTube at least gives you some degree of control over this. You can choose a resolution you want to view a video in, and it will attempt to show a video that looks kind of like that resolution. I mean, it's all subjective and dependent on the type of content being displayed, which is why you might sometimes feel like it's not doing a very good job, especially when there's a lot of motion on screen at once, like a video game with lots of moving grass, or lots of confetti, or rain. Having to process stuff that's highly detailed and moving erratically absolutely wrecks video quality. So with video at least, it all boils down to bitrate. The more the better. And the Blu-ray is kind of like the golden standard. Those mothers can be up to 100 gigabytes in size, which is enough to show a very detailed video. But online, the sizes of video files tends to be smaller because bitrate and bandwidth cost people money. Meanwhile, clever upscalers like DLSS are constrained by other limitations, namely your PC's processing power. So a very simplified explanation of how upscaling works is, say you have a pixel and want to get four pixels worth of detail from it. It will take four frames to achieve this. The first frame gets a subsample from this point up here. Then the second gets this one here. A third gets this one down here. And the fourth gets this one here. Just kidding. It gets this one down here. So over four frames, it's essentially managed to get the details of four pixels from doing the work of just one, potentially quadrupling your resolution. But it involves being able to ask that scene what's at that specific point in the scene, down to the sub-pixel location, every frame. The reason you can't do this with videos is because you only have the detail that's already there to work with, which is normally less than how many pixels there should be there already. If a video comprises of this image, you can ask it for four points in every pixel all you like. It's only going to reply with roughly the same result every time. You can use upscalers on a video, but it would have to be the simpler type of upscaler like FSR1 or NIS, which works by smoothing out jagged edges and by increasing the contrast and sharpness to give the impression that there's more detail, but it isn't adding anything extra. And do this too much and it'll look artificial and overly sharpened. NVIDIA's current video upscaler is called RTX Video Super Resolution, and it's a bunch of AI-driven enhancements to whatever it is that you're watching. I'm sure there will come a time when AI will be able to perform miracles in this regard, and that that time is fast approaching. But currently, the results of RTX video are subtle, focusing more on masking the artifacts of low quality videos instead of trying to add more detail to scenes, which would be a lot harder and will likely involve some degree of time travel. That's right, intelligent upscaling has another problem to deal with. Since it's trying to accumulate details over a number of frames, it also has to deal with motion during that time and it needs to keep all its older details in the right places. If it can't do this, then it'll result in horrible blurring and smearing all over the place. You'll see some of this smearing even in the best of upscalers, but it tends to do a very good job of it by using motion vectors, which tracks how every bit of the scene is moving, with which it can keep everything in roughly the right spot, or at the very least, it knows when to give up on the older details and just to discard them completely. This video here really conveyed the power of motion vectors to me. Ignore the fact that the entire image is balked. It very clearly shows the smooth, fluid accumulation of pixel details and how accurately the motion vectors can shift them around all over a complex moving scene. It's given me faith that motion vectors can in fact be very capable. You might not be able to see the image here, but you can easily make out the shapes of everything as they're moving around. And remember, it doesn't have to do a perfect job of this. It just needs to look better than if you're not upscaling at all to have value of some sort. 
So motion vectors are one thing that videos share in common with video game upscalers, because a similar thing is used heavily in videos to drag out old details for as long as possible. Again, breaking the tech shows it best, and those broken GIFs you see online are firstly hilarious, but they also demonstrate what happens if you don't give a video newer details to work with, and instead just ask it to keep updating older stuff with motion vectors forevermore. Ironically, making the best looking video requires doing the opposite of upscaling. Instead of trying to get as much detail out of every pixel as possible, videos do best when they find ways to not draw details that they think you won't notice. For instance, a video of a blue sky can probably get away with drawing the whole thing in super low resolution, because it's just a blue blob, isn't it? And then it can hold onto that image for however long the scene lasts for. And by doing so, it frees up more bitrate for all the details on scene that actually need regular updating, like a butterfly fluttering across said scene. Which of these looks better? Well, the top video, obviously. But here's the thing, both of these are using the same amount of bitrate. In fact, they're both parts of the same video. It's just that this top scene looks like this, with most of it being easy to draw blue sky, which allows the video to add more detail to the complicated looking bits of the scene. Meanwhile, this lower scene looks worse because the rest of the scene is also very complex to draw, and there just isn't enough bitrate in this video to make the whole thing look good, and thus the image quality everywhere suffers. And that's why game streams featuring dense vegetation will look worse than slower and simpler looking environments. And that's despite me using the latest AV1 video standard. With a low enough bitrate, it will still not look good enough. Now remember, game upscaling has only been around for a few years, but video compression is a battle that's been going on for over 30 years, with newer standards like what, this AV1 managing a much better job than older ones like H.264 or AVI. And what do we do with all of these improvements and enhancements? Do we use it to make our videos look better? No, of course not. It all goes into crushing the file size down more and more, because it saves someone, somewhere, a hell of a lot of money. Ultimately, upscaling and video trickery are all compromises, but they shift the bar upwards. They're a net positive. But what we choose to do with these benefits is ultimately up to us. With videos at least, whatever compromise is made at least benefits us somewhat as well. If YouTube really is putting all the new video encoding tricks into simply reducing file sizes rather than improving image quality, then we might complain the quality hasn't improved, but it will at least mean that it'll stream to us faster and we'll use less bandwidth. Similarly, I see people complaining that DLSS has made game developers lazier. I mean, that's impossible to prove, it's likely a complex multitude of factors like how the price performance curve of graphics hardware has stagnated since the latest generation of consoles, how it's still relatively early on in this console's generation's lifespans given the increased complexity and development times for modern games, and also due to the shift towards higher resolutions and frame rates in the last few years. But sure, let's just say the entire industry has become lazy and it's all upscaling's fault, because doing that is much simpler, easier to understand, and far more fun to get outraged about.